the teenage Prince Charles courted Camilla with ornately phrased love notes and late-night phone calls during their blissful 18-month romance, which began when they were both in their early 20s and experienced their first love. So why did he ultimately choose to wed Lady Diana Spencer? The history of Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall's romance is examined by royal authority Marlene Koenig. The Prince of Wales and Camilla Parker Bowles were wed on April 9, 2005, 34 years after they first met. The Sunday Telegraph's headline, Husband and Wife, at last, captured their long-standing friendship and love affair. In front of 800 guests at the Windsor Castle celebration, Prince Charles's mother, Queen Elizabeth II, made a toast to the newlyweds. They overcame Becker's Brook, the chair, and a variety of other really difficult challenges. I'm really proud of them and want the best for them because they have succeeded. My son is safe and sound at home with the person he loves. Not surprisingly, the Queen, who enjoys horses and horse racing, made references to racing as she welcomed Camilla into the family. Becker's Brook and the chair are fences at the Aintree Racecourse, where the Grand National is run. Prince Charles and Camilla Rosemary Shand initially met in the summer of 1971 when she was 24 and he was 22. There is a myth that the couple met at a polo match at Smith's Lawn in Windsor, but according to Jonathan Dimbleby's authorized biography, The Prince of Wales, 1994, the couple actually met through a mutual friend, Lucia Santa Cruz, the daughter of the Chilean ambassador to the UK, who Charles had met while he was a student at Cambridge. It is said that Charles and Camilla felt an instant attraction. Over the period of 18 months, their friendship developed into a romantic relationship. They were close friends and had a lot in common, including a love of Spike Milligan's BBC radio comedy series The Goon Show. Camilla was clearly at home in the country with horses and hunting, something Charles also found endearing. Since she was 17 years old, Camilla had been in an on-and-off relationship with Royal Horse Guard officer Andrew Parker Bowles. However, Andrew was rumored to have a wandering eye and be involved with multiple women at once. Prince Andrew dated Princess Anne in 1970 because they both had a passion for horses, but the marriage was not an option because Andrew was Roman Catholic. With elaborately written love messages and late-night phone calls, Charles sought Camilla. According to Dimbleby, he considered proposing marriage in November 1972 but was apprehensive to take the next step. Charles, who kept his options open, acknowledged that he was too unsure of his feelings to propose to Camilla. Midway through December 1972, they spent their final weekend together at the Broadlands' home in Hampshire. Only his great-uncle Lord Mountbatten had been given information regarding Camilla by Charles. Charles was aware that his parents would not support the union. His godmother Patricia, 2nd Countess Mountbatten of Burma, later stated to biographer Giles Brandreth that the marriage wouldn't have been conceivable, not then, which confirmed this opinion. You didn't want a past that lasted, and Camilla had one. After Charles and Camilla parted ways after their final weekend together, Charles wrote to Lord Mountbatten lamenting that this was the last time I shall see her for eight months. Charles went on the HMS Minerva in the middle of January 1973 for a seven-month cruise in the Caribbean as part of his career in the Navy. He learned that Camilla had gotten engaged to Andrew Parker Bowles on March 15 when he was in the West Indies. He expressed disappointment that such a lovely, calm, and mutually joyful relationship would end in a letter to his great-uncle. On July 4, 1973, Camilla and Andrew were married at Guards Chapel, Wellington Barracks, by Charles's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, and Princess Anne. Charles issued a letter of apology because he was still working for Minerva. Although it may have been arranged for Charles to go back to London in time for the nuptials, it probably wouldn't have been easy for him to witness Camilla walk down the aisle and marry Andrew. For a while, Camilla's friendship with Charles remained casual as she adapted to her new life as Mrs. Parker Bowles and began raising their two children, Tom and Laura, in the country. Charles was associated with many women throughout the years that followed, which he would later refer to as his footloose years, most notably Davina Sheffield, Amanda Natchville, Anna Wallace, and Lady Sarah Spencer, Diana's sister. Many people thought Davina Sheffield had a good chance of getting married to Charles, but this was derailed when one of her ex-boyfriends revealed their relationship to the media. When Charles discovered that Lord Mountbatten had been killed by the IRA in August 1979, he was in Iceland. He turned to Camilla Parker Bowles for comfort at this difficult time. In fact, Camilla was the only one he felt comfortable disclosing anything to. She served as his closest companion, sole partner, and, upon the passing of his great-uncle, lover. This second relationship, which according to royal author Penny Junor began in early 1978, soon after Laura, Camilla's second child, was born, 
lasted until Charles was engaged to Diana in 1981. Highgrove House, a rural residence for the Prince of Wales in Gloucestershire, was purchased by the Duchy of Cornwall in 1980. Charles is the Duke of Cornwall because he is the eldest son of the King. Bolahide Manor, Camilla and Andrew's Wiltshire House, was only 11 miles from the estate. According to Lady Mountbatten, Charles wanted nothing more than a regular family life, therefore the acquisition of the land was an investment in his future. How did Prince Charles and Diana meet? Why did he marry Diana? When Charles visited the Spencer home, Althorpe, in 1977, while he was dating Lady Sarah, Lady Diana's older sister, he felt she was jolly, and this is when he first noticed her. Early in 1978, Lady Sarah and Charles were skiing in Klosters, Switzerland, when Sarah made the decision to go to lunch with two British journalists. This is how their relationship came to an end. She discussed her drinking and her struggles with anorexia there, but one of her kamikaze remarks, as journalist Tina Brown called them, may have been the most destructive. It involved the Prince of Wales. She admitted, he is a wonderful man, but I am not in love with him. And regardless of his position, whether he was a dustman or the King of England, I wouldn't wed anyone I didn't love. Prior to one of the interviews appearing in Woman's Own, Lady Sarah informed Charles that she had given a press interview. You've just done something really stupid, Charles said in a cold and icy manner. Although Lady Sarah was unaware of it at the time, she had accidentally allowed Charles to pursue Diana, her younger sister. Later that year, Lady Diana and Lady Sarah both received invites to Charles's 30th birthday celebration at Buckingham Palace. Lady Sarah was by this time Charles's ex-girlfriend. The Parker Bowles attended the gathering as well. Diana's friend Philip de Pass extended an invitation to her to attend a party at his parents' property, New Grove, close to Petworth, in the summer of 1980. The Prince of Wales is the honorable guest. Charles first noticed Diana Spencer as a potential girlfriend during de Pass's house party. Diana brought up Lord Mountbatten's funeral as they were sharing a hay bale at a post-polo barbecue, telling Charles that it was the most terrible thing I've ever seen. When I watched, my heart broke for you because I thought, it's wrong, you're lonely, you should be with someone to take care of you. Charles was immediately attracted to Diana because of her purity and her sensitive personality. For the following few months, they intermittently saw one another. Charles invited her to join his group for the cows on the Isle of Wight sailboat races during the first week of August 1980 on the Royal Yacht Britannia. A month later, Diana accepted an invitation to visit Balmoral, where she lived with her sister Jane, Lady Jane Fellows, who was wed to Robert Fellows, the Queen's assistant private secretary, and had a grace and favor residence there. The Queen extended this invitation at Charles's request. Diana said, speaking in perspective, I was afraid because I had never been at Balmoral and I wanted to get it properly. The Parker Bowles and other friends of the Prince of Wales were also present at Balmoral. While considering the benefits and drawbacks of being married to Diana, Charles sought Camilla's counsel. Diana seemed to have it all. She was the daughter of an earl with connections to the royal family, sand he had no history, therefore there was no need to worry about ex-boyfriends selling their stories to the tabloids. Although Prince Philip took matters into his own hands as the media storm increased, Charles still had his doubts. He wrote his son a letter telling him that he needed to decide whether to ask Diana to marry him or let her go. For the sake of my country and my family, Charles intended to act properly. On February 6, 1981, he proposed to Diana at Windsor Castle. Even though Camilla Parker Bowles was more than just Charles's dearest friend, she accepted without hesitation. Although Diana was skeptical of Camilla's advice, one of her friends said to the biographer Giles Branderth that Camilla had persuaded Charles to marry Diana. According to Dimbleby, Charles attempted to assure Diana that while he and Camilla had formerly shared a close friendship, now that they were engaged, there was, and would be, no other lady in his life. Charles and Camilla both acknowledged that their relationship had ended, but they remained close friends because Camilla continued to be a pillar of support and a confidant. On July 29, 1981, at St. Paul's Cathedral, Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer exchanged vows in what many refer to as the wedding of the century. William and Harry, the couple's two kids, were born in 1982 and 1984, respectively, before the first cracks in their marriage started to show. Charles and Diana didn't have many similar interests besides their kids. The marriage had broken down by 1986. Concerned for Charles, two of their shared friends independently approached Camilla and asked her to get in touch with him. Charles was called when she picked up the phone, and their friendship began again. After a few years, Charles would agree that Mrs. Parker Bowles was a close friend, 
but he would also assert that he had been faithful to Diana up until the point where their marriage irretrievably fell down. In 1996, Charles and Princess Diana's marriage was dissolved. Diana passed away in a vehicle accident in Paris a year later. Charles and Camilla didn't make their first public appearance as a couple until January 1999. On February 10, 2005, they announced their engagement. On April 9, they married legally and attended a blessing service in Windsor, where they confessed their manifold sins and wickedness. I hope you enjoyed the story of King Charles' marriages. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our future mysterious stories.